Hi everyone, this is Dr. Wolf, and this is our video lesson on understanding hypothesis testing. In any research study, there are two hypotheses. The first is the research hypothesis. This is the research hypothesis that states there will be some kind of difference or relationship between your variables. We also sometimes call this the alternative hypothesis because it is an alternative to the null. The mathematical symbol for this hypothesis is either H1 or HA. The A stands for alternative. The other hypothesis is the null hypothesis. This is the hypothesis that states that there is no effect or no difference or no relationships to the variables in your study. So if this is a correlation, there, there is no relationship between your variables. If this is a study with different groups, then there's no difference between the groups. The key with the null hypothesis is that it always states that there is either no or none in the wording, so that there is no difference or no effect. The symbol for a null hypothesis is H0, again, because zero is none or null. You can think of hypothesis testing as a battle. We are trying to see which of our two hypotheses has the necessary support. Do we support H1? the alternative hypothesis that states that there is a difference? Or is there not enough support for H1 and thus H0, the null hypothesis, is the hypothesis that is supported? In science, we always assume the null hypothesis is true. We conduct research to see if we can support an alternative hypothesis over the null. That's again why we call the alternative hypothesis the alternative hypothesis. If a study cannot find the necessary support for the alternative hypothesis, then we continue to assume that the null hypothesis is true. The language we use for this is, we retain the null. Think of this as the alternative hypothesis being unable to beat the null. The null is the winning hypothesis, so it's the one we go with. If instead our research study does find the necessary support for the alternative hypothesis, then we state that. The language we use is, we reject the null. Think of this as the alternative hypothesis beating the null hypothesis and is now the winning hypothesis. Let's try some examples. A hypothesis that says that changing one variable will result in changes to the dependent variable is called the blank hypothesis. Your choices are the null, the alternative, or the conventional hypothesis. Well, we know it's not the conventional hypothesis because that's not one of the hypotheses we covered. So which one is it? The correct answer is B, the alternative hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is the one that states that there'll be some kind of difference or relationship in your variables. So that is the correct answer for this example. Let's try another example. I want you to select which of these three is a null hypothesis. Your first choice is participants will rate the videos as more useful to their learning than the PowerPoint slides. Your second choice is, participants will rate the PowerPoint slides as more useful to their learning than the video. And your third choice is, there will be no difference in the rating for the PowerPoint slides and for the videos by the participants. Which one is the null hypothesis? Well, remember, a null hypothesis is the one that states there is no relationship or no difference in your variables. So that would mean that, that C, your third option, is the null hypothesis. There is one more type of hypotheses that we need to discuss, and that's directional and non-directional hypotheses. To understand these two, we need to return to the normal curve. Remember, the normal curve is a symmetrical, unimodal, meaning it only has one mode, bell-shaped curve. It bulges in the middle, and it has two narrow ends. Remember, in the last unit, you learned that those two ends are called the tails. So because it's symmetrical, there are two tails in a normal curve. A directional hypothesis is when you state a specific direction or a specific outcome for your research. This could be like saying group one will have higher scores than group two, or there will be a positive relationship between these variables. Because we have selected a specific outcome or a specific direction for our results, when we test that hypothesis, we use a one-tailed test. This is because we think our results will be in one specific tail of the normal curve. For example, this one. 
On the other hand, a non-directional hypothesis is not quite so sure as the outcome. A non-directional hypothesis states there will be a difference in your variables or a relationship between them, but it doesn't state exactly what kind of relationship. This could be something like, there will be a difference in the scores between the two groups, or there will be a relationship between these variables. Because we have not been as specific in the outcome, when we test that hypothesis, we use a two-tailed test. This is because we're going to look in both tails for our results. And if our results are in either one of the two tails, we can support that hypothesis over the null hypothesis. Okay, let's try our last example. If your hypothesis is there will be a statistically significant correlation between sense of belonging and engagement, then what type of hypothesis test will you use? Think about this one yourself. This type of hypothesis is a non-directional hypothesis. We haven't said what kind of correlation. So because it is a non-directional hypothesis, we're going to use a two-tailed test. If it's a positive relationship, it might be in one tail. And if it's a negative relationship, it might be in the other. We're not sure which one we're going to get, and so that's why we're going to use a two-tailed test and look at both. If our example had instead said there will be a significant positive correlation, then that would be a one-tailed test. But for this, the answer is B. So this video was just to introduce you to these topics. To get started, there's still way more to learn about this topic. So after you finish this video, make sure you review the rest of the content in your module. As always, if you have any questions, you can post to the FAQ board or you can email me. And other than that, I'm Dr. Wolf, and I'll see you online.